Welcome to this overview of Read and Write. My name is Paul. I work for TextHelp, and TextHelp is the company that produces Read and Write, as well as Fluency Tutor, Snapverter, Equatio, and RiQ. Read and Write is essentially a toolbar that has about 20 different educational technology tools on it, similar to apps and extensions. These tools are going to help students with reading, writing, research, and organization. Many people refer to Read and Write as the Swiss Army knife of tools for educational technology. Before I show you what Read and Write is, it's important to show you what Read and Write does for students. In this example, a student was asked to answer and complete sentences. So here is that student's work. You can see he understands the concept in number one, but then number two, IDK, I don't know. Three and four, he's just got single words there, and then it kind of gets worse on the second page. However, here is that same student about a week later after using Read and Write. Let's look at another student. This student struggled with the writing process. It's easy to see here when you look at his handwriting, but after a couple days of using Read and Write, this is that same student. Some really amazing transformations are made with both of these students. How do we make those transformations happen? We combine tools like text-to-speech, dictation, prediction, writing tools, dictionaries, editing tools, study skills, and organizational tools into one easy-to-find, easy-to-use toolbar. Read and Write supports many different platforms. Today we're going to look specifically at Read and Write for Google Chrome. Read and Write for Google Chrome launched in 2013. We currently have over 20 million users and growing every day. And Read and Write helped TextHelp earn Google's Global Technology Partner of the Year Award. Read and Write supports students in Google Docs, Web Pages, LMS Environments, Google Forms, Google Slides, Office 365, and also PDF files. So let's take a look. Here on my web page, if I want to bring Read and Write in, I go up to my extensions and I choose this purple puzzle piece. And there, Read and Write is floating in my web page. Now, the first thing most students are going to use Read and Write for is to read some text aloud. So I'm just going to grab some text here. And then when I press the play button, you're not only going to hear it read, but you're going to see it use dual color highlighting to emphasize the word that it's reading at the time to help students with tracking and decoding. The unique geography of the Arctic leads to unique weather patterns that reappear in the region year after year. Some weather patterns, such as cyclone... So I'll pause it there and explain also that Research has shown that when students have the option of a human reader or a computer reader, they generally fare better with a computer reader. And the reason is the students can stop it, they can start it, they can replay it as many times as they need, and then with a tool like Read and Write, they can also customize it. So here I can customize and bring in any number of different um, voices. I can also change the rate of the speech, how it's going to read, there's also translation tools, so I can change it to a language that I need. If I am Spanish speaking, I can also change the entire program to Spanish or French and a couple other languages there as well. And then if I want, I can remove certain tools from the toolbar if I don't need them, and I can switch around the order as well to customize it. When I look back at this web page, you'll see over here, there is some text here, but this is not text that I can access. In other words, I can't grab it. It's part of an image. So to access this, we actually have the screenshot reader. And when I choose this and just pull a box around this text, it's going to scan it and then read it aloud to me. See level pressure composite mean, MB, October 1st to 30th, 2010. So really, pretty much any text that's on a web page, I'll be able to read one way or another. Some other helpful comprehension tools for web pages here are the talking dictionary. So if I don't know what a word is, I can have this read aloud to me. Now, shapes and colors, etc., put together in a regular way, a pattern on her shirt. And similarly, we also have a picture dictionary. And this is going to give me a visual representation of this word. And this has been really helpful for ELL students because it doesn't really matter what language they speak natively. They can look at the picture and they get it. 
And then lastly for comprehension here, a last couple of tools. If I am somebody who speaks a different language or ELL learner, I can choose the translator and it will translate this word and also speak it with that um, particular voice. And there's also here the screen masking tool, which allows students to, if they want to concentrate more, they can actually change the background color here. They can make it more opaque or transparent. I can make this little window here a little bit larger or smaller if I need to, to help me concentrate, or for some students that might use color overlays. Let's look now at some writing tools inside of a Google Doc. Here in the Google Doc, when I choose this little purple puzzle piece, now Read and Write is going to hang down in the document. A really helpful tool for students writing is word prediction. And word prediction, much like on our phones and other devices, is going to uh, recommend words that it thinks I want based upon what I'm writing. So here I'm going to put in today I walked to school. And you'll see all the options here when I hover over them, it's going to read them aloud. Was. Wasn't. Want. And another great tip here is when students, if they are looking through some of these options here, they can use the picture dictionary and the talking dictionary at the same time. So now I can tell that's exactly what I want. I heard it read, I have a definition, and I also have a visual, so I'm going to pop that in. What's been so transformative for many students in these online collaborative live environments is the other students don't see these supports there. So I can show the other students that I can spell and I can write there just like they can, and they don't have to see the supports that I have. So it really has helped so many struggling students with confidence to be in those live environments. Another nice thing here about word prediction is there's a phonetic tool in here. So you'll see as soon as I put a Z in here for physics and it notices that I'm spelling phonetically, it's going to basically start giving me those words. Physics. So now I can pop that in and I'm good to go. Another really helpful tool for students in the writing process is speech to text. So when I choose the talking type here, I can just start talking and it's going to transcribe into the document everything that I'm saying. Today, I walked to school, period. And you'll note here, there's many different languages. So if you have students that um, are ELL learners and speak other languages natively, it will transcribe in their language as well, which is just great. Now, once you have written in the document, there's some great helpful tools here for proofreading. The first would be to use the text-to-speech to listen to your writing read back to you. It was a sunny day, so we went to the beach. Another great tool here is the Check It feature. And Check It is going to check grammar, punctuation, spelling, and a host of other errors. So for here, you can see when I choose it, it's an unpaired symbol. Uh, as I go down here and I want to look and see what this bear is, I can do that. It's also nice because I can use the picture dictionary here to define which bear this is. So it really helps me in that decision-making process. We have some really helpful guidelines here that help students and teachers understand when should we use certain tools in the writing process. Here we've got the six plus one traits writing process and you can see when we're pre-writing and we're doing brainstorming, gathering details, background research, here are the tools on Read and Write that can help and here are the symbols for those tools. So many schools will actually print these up and leave them in the computer lab or in the classroom and point to these on specific days that we're doing revising today. Here are the tools we're going to use. Another great tool here are the voice comments. So students that struggle with writing or typing or spelling, but they do know the answers, a great way for them to show what they know is to leave a voice comment. So here when I choose voice note, I can actually answer here with my voice. The lake near Cleveland is Lake Erie. And I can listen to that. The lake near Cleveland is Lake Erie. And if I'm happy with it, <laughs> I just insert it. And now just like a regular comment in a Google Doc, it's going to be there for anybody that has access to this Google Doc to listen to. So a teacher, instead of reading what the student wrote, if he or she may struggle with that, can just listen to what their response is. The lake near Cleveland is Lake Erie. 
Where this has been really helpful is with math. So many teachers and students, teachers expect students to explain how they came to the answer in math, and this is a great way to do it. So I can just highlight my math here and use the voice note to say, I added four to each side of the equal sign, so four, or x, equals 14. And then just insert that. So now the student or the teacher comes along and listens to it. Conversely, teachers can also leave notes in Google Docs for students using this feature. So it's a really helpful tool. If we go back to the web page we were looking at, there are some great study skills tools that are available for students as well. In this first example, I'm going to highlight some words that maybe are a struggle for me. I don't really know what they mean. So I've got patterns. I don't know what weather is. I don't know what these seasons are. I don't know what multiple is. And it doesn't matter which of these four colors I choose. When I'm done, I'm going to choose this vocabulary button. What vocabulary is going to do is basically build for me a vocabulary list. And it's going to not only define the words, but it's going to give me a visual for the words. And it's going to give me a place where I can personalize it. So now I've got some definitions here I can choose from. Uh, and on the right-hand side here, if I want to personalize this or customize this, I can just type in there or I can use the tools in Read and Write. Perhaps I'd want to use speech to text here to explain what this is. And I can, if I want, get rid of some of the other stuff here. But it makes it really simple for students and teachers to make these study guides for vocabulary. If I go back to this page, and I'll get rid of these highlights, and now let's say I'm doing some research or some studying. Uh, I'm going to highlight some information that I think is important for Arctic weather, and I'm going to label that green. And there's some more information. And then down here, anything that has to do that's important with cyclones, I'm going to do yellow. And look, there's another green. And as I go through my document here on my web page, I'm color coding the information. And right now it's getting a little discombobulated, but that's okay. I'll show you what we can do with this. So there's something that's green, there's something else that's yellow. Now when I'm done, I choose this Collect Highlights button, and what it's going to do is it's also going to, again, make a new Google Doc, save it into Google Drive, but it's going to take all the information I have highlighted and organize it by color in the document. It also gives me a link at the bottom to where I got the information in case I've got to create a bibliography. But a really great tool for students that struggle with organization. And one of the last things here to point out on the web pages is, let's say that I am on this web page and it's kind of busy for some students. There's a lot going on. It might distract some students. I can choose the Simplify page. And what Simplify page is going to do is it's going to take the text from that page and open it up in a new tab and get rid of all the visual distractions. So now it makes it a lot easier for me to concentrate and it automatically opens up Read and Write here so that I can use this to access the content if I need to. So really, really helpful tools there. Last couple things to show, here's a PDF. And so if I need to have this read aloud, I can use the read aloud features here on the toolbar in our PDF viewer. I've also got those familiar tools of picture dictionary and talking dictionary. So if I needed the something over here, let's say journey, I can look up the picture there. I can do a talking dictionary. I can also, if I want to, use those same types of study skills tools like highlighting and pulling them into um, collected highlight documents. I can also have them defined if I want to, which is great when you're dealing with things like science to define these words. And then lastly, we recently added in some tools where students can add shapes and drawing, either freehand or existing shapes there into the document. So if I wanted to, I could add that in here. And I can change the colors and all those sorts of things to customize it there. The last thing to point out here is you can also leave some comments in here, much like the ones we did in the Google Doc. So if I'm sharing this with someone, I can actually leave a comment here. And if I want, I can speak the comment. I can use word prediction like we've seen before. I can leave a voice note, speech to text, and I can leave that in there. And anybody else that has access to this document using Read and Write for Google is going to be able to see these comments and add to them as well. As I mentioned earlier, if I'm in a Microsoft environment, so here I'm basically using Office 365, Read and Write works great inside of this environment as well. There is a sweeping trend across the nation of cloud-based technology in school districts. This is particularly great if you've got districts that are not only using Microsoft, but also are using Microsoft and Google to have the exact same support be available in the Google and Microsoft environments. 
And then you can also use it, as I mentioned before, in Google Forms. So if I want, I can use the speech to text to respond here, that sort of thing. And then if I'm creating something in Google Slides here, I can use things like the word prediction right inside of Google Slides. We've got a great web page. It's got some great resources, uh, video sources on YouTube. And so you can go there to check out some of those tools or those videos that are going to help you understand certain sections of what I just showed you on the toolbar. If you go to training.texthelp.com, you'll also find that there are some modules for all of our products. So if you want to learn more about how to use Read and Write, you can basically get certified as a Read and Write teacher here, self-paced, and it's completely free. When you want to add Read and Write, you can just go to texthelp.com and look up our products and do Try Now. Or you can go to the Google Chrome Web Store and just add it. Look for Read and Write for Google Chrome there, and you can add it to your, uh, to your Chrome web browser. And if you are a K-12 teacher, once you do this, you can also Google Text Help Free for Teachers, and you can actually register there as a teacher to get the entire toolbar for free forever. So to wrap things up here, a few more things to note. I mentioned that there's also Windows and Mac support. And when you have Read and Write, you not only get Read and Write for Google Chrome, you can also install these locally on Macs and Windows. And why you might want to do that, if you have desktop testing needs or lockdown browser access you need. You can also use it for specific IEP accommodation. So if there's something, a deep tool you need, uh, or some type of setting that isn't in Google, there's some deeper ones that are located on the Windows and Mac versions. And then if you have documents that are inaccessible, there are virtual scanners on these that you can use to make those documents accessible. The licensing for Read and Write is shown here. Single users, a dollar or $145 a year. The domain is basically an entire school district, and it's $1.80 for each student. And then if you want a kind of midsection in there, or you wanted to have uh, support for specific students, you can do that across all of your buildings uh, for $12 a student and just provide this to specific students. It doesn't have to be the entire district. So some next steps. Keep in mind, Read and Write is free for K-12 teachers. Students can have access to all the features for 30 days, and then after 30 days, everything will go gray except for the text-to-speech and uh, translation tools on web pages and in Google Docs. We're happy to set up domain pilots when you want to do that. We have those free online professional development offerings. We're happy to do webinars and demonstrations for your staff if you'd like to as well. And then we, we can also provide a licensing quote that would suit your needs for your district. If you'd like more information, please feel free to email me at paul.brown at texthelp.com. Thanks for joining us today.